while I have everybody here, I'm just going to take a quick minute to share a couple of extra resources. We have um, a lot of people might not be aware of some new tools that came online recently. I want to make sure everybody has them to use. So a couple of new things to help you in the product world that are out there up on secondary SharePoint right now. So in the last couple of weeks, uh, we launched and put out this tool right here, which is the Manny Map. Uh, so this is my most recent effort to try to make myself irrelevant and obsolete. So it's basically a click enabled flow chart that you can go through to kind of help you find the right products because we do have a lot of products. So you can come into this right here on secondary SharePoint at any point in time, come through and it starts out with, okay, why is the loan not agency? Why can't you go FHA, BA, conventional Fannie Freddie? So you can click on each of these, every one that has a little green figure on it, you can click on it and it'll take you through and it'll help you try to find the resources that you need uh, get a list of the products. A lot of it connects to reports that are on the um, SharePoint otherwise, and it'll come through and so it's different things. So it's okay, my credit's not good enough. So you can click on credit and it's gonna walk you through and ask you some questions. Okay, what's your credit score? You know, recent bankruptcy, recent foreclosure. Um, is it Fannie Freddie? It'll take you to resources or it will, um, the website's running slow, or it'll take you to a list of potential products. So for example, click on foreign national, it's going to take you into a report that's up on SharePoint that shows you all of the programs that do foreign nationals. If the issue is, like I said, property is one of them. So, okay, is it high acreage? You click on that, it's going to take you to a report that shows you, that has a series of reports that show you all of the stuff sorted by way of uh, Max Acreage. So for example, here is a report for all programs that do 24 months bank statements sorted by highest allowable acreage, then by highest LTV on a purchase. So this is a great way to start where if for some reason I'm not available at the time or you just want to do it yourself, it'll help you walk through and be able to get to a lot of the products to be able to see what's there, kind of a self-service portal for it. So this is here for you to use. I want to make sure everybody's using it. But the second one is one that I is the more recent one that came up. And uh, I mean, I'll be honest, I had a little bit of a call reluctance type thing on even releasing this because uh, it put a lot of work into it. And, and it's an interesting concept. So this is a spreadsheet that is up on the Internet for you to use, because I know that everybody finds a lot of time talking to people right now where they're saying, oh, it's not a good time to buy a house. Um, I did a call the other day with a loan officer and a realtor. And I was like, hey, do you, are you finding that you're you're speaking to a lot of people that are like, ah, I just don't think right now is a good time to buy a house. And he's like, Psst, like every call. And so this is kind of what we built it for. So I tried to make it in really simple terms. It's an Excel spreadsheet, but I tried to put it in sentence form as much as I could. So it basically goes through, okay, what is the purchase price of the home you were buying? So let's say it's 400. Okay, how much are you putting down? Oops, that's 40,000. I don't think there's any of those in our markets. Okay, how much are you putting down? So you're putting down 5%, which is a total of $20,000 of your money. And then we have closing costs that they're going to have to pay. Let's say it's $5,000. So one of the big things that people lose sight of when they're talking to people about how much money can be made in real estate is when you buy a $400,000 house, you out of your pocket, do not pay $400,000. But if the house goes up 10%, that's $40,000 worth of appreciation, which is yours, even though you didn't pay the full $400,000. So in this example, let's say, okay, in this example, it's 5% down, which is 20 grand, plus 5% of your closing costs. So your total cash investment is $25,000. Over here we can put in predicted home price appreciation so let's say people go ah, i don't know blah 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 it's not a good year okay so let's say you only get two percent the first year and then you get a five percent appreciation the second year it's six percent the third year seven percent the fourth year eight percent and then it goes back down to five so you can look up uh you know mbs highway has a bunch of tools where you can go and do that where you can look this stuff up i'm sure you see stuff in your marketplace but essentially this goes through and it says, okay, then it was those that predicted appreciation schedule. That means your house will be worth 408,000 at the end of year one, 428,000, 454, and so forth. So basically what it comes down to is it shows the profit you've made. So in year one, you've made $8,000 on your $25,000 investment, okay? If you're looking to flip this in a year, maybe this isn't the house for you. 
at the end of the second year, though, you'll have made $28,400. So at the end of the year and the second year, you're in the money. So keep in mind that you did not invest $400,000 of your money into this purchase of this home. Your real cash investment is $25,000. So even if you get, so even though you get full investment of the value going up, your initial investment doesn't change. So you actually make, okay, if you're looking to flip this in a year, it's not a good rate of return. You didn't pick a good house for it with good marketplace appreciation the first year. But at the end of the second year, your rate of return would be 6.8% per year. By the end of your third year, you will have made a 38.8% per year return on your money. The stock market is not doing that right now. I don't know if anybody's looked at the 401k statements that came out at the end of the year. It wasn't the 38.8%. It wasn't even 6.8%. End of the fourth year, rate of return is that. So it's really here to kind of show an illustration. These are not predictions. There's a bunch of disclaimers at the bottom. This isn't investment advice. This isn't all this stuff. It's just there to illustrate the potential aspects, the potential wealth gain that can come from owning a home. So let's say you're doing an FHA loan on this. The seller pays most of the closing costs. So now they're only into it for $15,000. All of a sudden that rate return skews a whole bunch. Okay, now all of a sudden by the end of the second year, you have a return on your money of 44.7% per year. Show me the other investment that you can make for 15 grand that can return that percentage return. I'll wait. Yeah, it's, it's not going to happen. So that's the big thing. And then as you scroll down the page, it shows some, to put it in relative perspectives, it shows some of the historic returns from the Dow Jones Industrial Average or the S&P 500 index and declares what it is. So that way, you know, if somebody wants to look at it, they can look at it. Okay. So the average rate of return is about 11% on the S&P. Well, you're 10Xing that. People that can 10X the return of the S&P on a grand scale, have a, there's a special turn for them billionaire. That's what they call them. So this is the thing that kind of helps show what the true impact to the borrower is. Don't be changing my numbers, whoever JK is. Um, this, shows, uh, this shows you the real rate of return that is available to you by doing this stuff. So this is something you can sit down, play with with your borrowers, and then you, know, you change your appreciation to what kind of a lot of places are probably really going to see. I mean, really, a 6% rate of return is kind of a good normal throughout history and stuff like that. So, you know, by playing with this, you really see it. It also highlights the compounding effect of these things going up. And then you get appreciation on the appreciation of the appreciated appreciation. So this is there for you. And like I said, it is up on the secondary share point uh, for you to be able to play with and use. Like I said, your Manning map is right here. Click on that. It'll open up to help you find your stuff. And then the appreciation rate of return is right there.